Hi everybody, my name is Talia Clark, and on this video I will be exposing the rituals for Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity. Um, this is part 9 of my Greek Life is Demonic series, and I'm going to enter into this video with a word of prayer. Father, I thank you for allowing me to see another day. I thank you for keeping me in perfect peace. God, I pray that your word would be delivered in such a way that those who are meant to see this video would accept it with no hesitation. I pray that you'll convict the hearts of your people and give them the grace to come out of these organizations. God, I pray that you would remove the scales from their eyes, open their spiritual eyes to see the wickedness in which Satan has deceived them into. God, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. And I pray that you would allow me to deliver your word eloquently in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for it, Father, and it's in Jesus' name I pray. So I first of all ask that you all would grace me because the rituals that I have here are kind of scrambled up. It's as if whoever posted these have put it into some type of puzzle in which I've had to piece together. And it's pretty long, which we pray, we pray God that, um, well, thank you, Lord, anyway. So, the Greek god for Kappa Alpha Psi is named Apollo, um, and he is the Greek god of apparently music and the sun and light. Um, yeah, so another false god, which we have already figured out from the other eight videos that I've posted. Um, and so I'm just going to go pretty much right into the rituals. Now, one thing about the Kappas is they're probably the only organization that does not accept honorary members. Everyone who inquires of being a Kappa has to go through the process. Now, being an honorary member does not mean that you just get to skip over everything because yes, you get to skip over the process of the hazing and all of the other stuff that um, the profiles have you doing, you still have to make a vow, you still have to kneel before an altar, you still have to sign your name. Um, so it's not that they are exempt from the demonic behavior of these organizations. Um, and I see that, you know, there are many, many, many people who call themselves Christians, who say that they are followers of the Lord, um, even in celebrities, um, musicians, pastors, and all of that good stuff, first ladies, bishops, all of that, are in these organizations. Do not follow them to hell. Do not follow them to hell. I don't care who is in these organizations. If you do not seek the Lord for yourself, it is literally the blind leading the blind. Do not follow other people to destruction um yeah so and I, this is not me saying that oh you're going to hell i'm not i don't have a heaven or hell to put anybody in however there is a thing called righteous judgment and i'll do whatever the lord is calling me to do i don't care how that makes you feel i don't care what you think about it i don't care what your beliefs are Whatever the Lord calls me to do, I will do just that because he is the head of my life, not you, not anybody else, Jesus. With that being said, we're going to go to the rituals for Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity. This is the initiation ritual. So it just basically goes into their history and um, goes into when they were founded, which is January 5th, 1911, their colors which are crimson and cream, which is the same colors for Delta. Um, it goes into the fact that they do not have honorary membership. And then it goes into the items that are required for the initiatory ceremony, which is a supply of invisible ink. This may be made by mixing one part of concentrated hydrochloric acid with nine parts of water or the juice of a lemon will serve. Open flame, <laughs> a can of sternal, um, an alcohol lamp or a charcoal burner may be used. Means of producing successively a blue light and a red light. A camera flash apparatus covered with cellophane of the specified colors produces 
excellent results or blue and red light bulbs may be used. Um, number four, supply of crackers. Five, rope made into a noose. Um, six, branding iron. A wire will suffice. Seven, small piece of raw meat, a slice of bacon. Eight, sufficient amount of sand or small gravel to be divided into two parts. One part is to be slightly heated. Nine, shallow pan large enough to step into. Ten, small amount of cracked ice. Eleven, cotton batting covering the eyes before blindfolding. Um, Twelve, binders for the wrist. Paddles, clubs, whips, and other instruments of torture are on display at the abode of the Thracians. Um, these are not to be used. Now the Thracians, which is mentioned here, um, they will be mentioned a lot within this initiation ritual. Thracians are mythical ancestors. Okay, so we'll go into the general information. It says, all initiations shall be formal meetings. The opening and closing ceremonies shall be used at all formal meetings. In order that all the Kappa men become familiar with the ritual, all regular meetings of the chapter shall be formal. It is the responsibility of the strategist and lieutenant strategist to see that the assembly room is properly arranged for all formal meetings. Then we go down to the seizure of the formal meetings. Um, then it says for the last part, I guess they're in this meeting, the Holy Bible open to the third chapter of Proverbs shall be placed on the altar. This is the procedure for of formal meetings. And it goes into like a bunch of different things that are needed here. Um, the strategist and lieutenant strategist shall be stationed at the entry of the assembly room. The altar of Kappa Alpha Psi, which is the sacred Delphic shrine shall be placed in the center of the room and covered with a crimson and cream coverlet. The Holy Bible shall be open to the third chapter of Proverbs and it shall be placed on the altar. Each officer should wear the insignia of his office, a meeting of the local chapters, and the members shall address the Paul March as Brother Paul March. At meeting of province councils, the presiding officer shall be addressed as Brother Province Paul March. In the Grand Chapter, the presiding officer shall be addressed as Brother Grand Paul March. The usual sign of voting shall be as follows. Those in favor of the motion will raise their right hand and say aye. Um, those opposed to the motion will raise their right hand and say no. And then it goes into the opening ceremony and the wraps. Now, a uh, Delphic Shrine. A Delphic Shrine is where an oracular god is consulted. Little Q, or HG an authoritative person who divines the future so basically divination now as we go further into the ritual they'll talk about an oracle and the oracle is a person who dibbles and dabbles when we actually go into deeper depths of this Delphi and the Oracle um, and the sacred Delphi shrine, we'll find that Pythena was the name of a high priestess of the Temple of Apollo at Delphi. Um, she was basically a witch. She specifically served as its Oracle and was known as the Oracle of Delphi. Um, so if that isn't enough information for you to see that the God behind this organization is Satan, um, it's just a bunch of deception wrapped into more deception. Um, so they have placed the third chapter of Proverbs and then they go down into the chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi, the three raps. That's to, to enter into the ceremony, the opening ceremony called March. That's the three wraps in the opening ceremony. Like I said, the knocks representing Jesus. So we'll go to Revelation 3 and 20, where Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. So this is like uh, they're knocking at the door of your heart, like I come in. Um, and they're, they're trying to be the symbolism of in place of Jesus because they want to be your God, right? Um, 
And so it says the chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi will come to order. The strategists will see the room and the duty prepared and the members will array themselves appropriately for a meeting of this great plan. The strategist sees that the room is properly prepared and the members take their proper places. Strategists, when everything is in order, Brother Paul March, all is now in order. Paul March, brothers, where seek we inspiration and guidance? for the proper performance of our duties as worthy members of Kappa Alpha Psi. All, we seek inspiration and guidance from the great God of all the earth in the Holy Bible, which he has given unto men as the lamp unto their pathway. That scripture, and like, of course, they're going to try to deceive you in the beginning by saying God, because that's what they all do, and they mix it. They mix Bible with their fraternity, and it's not, you can't do that because this fraternity serves Apollo, not Yahweh. So you cannot mix Yahweh and Apollo because he stands alone. He said, has no other gods before me. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. We'll go back to that. Exodus 20 and 3, thou shalt have no other gods before me. These are college students. These are people that are, what, 18, 19, uh, maybe 20, 21. These are people, even if they did grow up in a church, who many of them did, that's why the base of Christianity pulled them in because you hear Bible and you think, oh, okay, got to be of God. When, like I said, many people didn't know God for themselves. They didn't have a relationship for Jesus for themselves or they didn't know the word of the Lord for, um, for themselves. So they saw Bible and they just went with it uh, with not recognizing that Bible was mixed with some other stuff tainted paul march worthy vice paul march read thou unto us the great lessons from the holy writ vice paul march brothers hearken unto this he reads the first 10 verses of the third chapter of proverbs so we'll go read proverbs 3 the first 10 verses guidance for the young this is the new king james version my son do not forget my law but let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let no mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart, and find favor in high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health for your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vets will overflow with new wine. And so we'll go back. Paul March, let us now make unto our creator the great supplication. Raps twice. All stand, recite the Lord's Prayer, and remain standing. So they're doing our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So it looks real holy right now. It looks real holy. They ain't doing nothing that looks too tainted at this moment. And remember, this is just the entrance. This is the opening of the ceremony. So if you're in this opening of the ceremony, you are right there thinking, oh, this is innocent and this is of God. So this is the deception here. And then it says, Paul March, what is the great purpose of Kappa Alpha Psi? All achievement through fraternity, knowledge, and fidelity. Paul March. What is the great purpose of Kappa Alpha Psi? All achievement through fraternity, knowledge, and fidelity. Paul March. We will now recite our creed. All recite in unison. The fundamental purpose of Kappa Alpha Psi is achievement. We desire to awaken within each member high ideals and an unquenchable desire to achieve both in college and in subsequent life in a place of usefulness and honor in the world. We believe that the virtues of fraternity, knowledge, and fidelity are potent means of realizing these ends. Believing this, we, the members of Kappa Alpha Psi, do hereby solemnly dedicate ourselves to the task of honorable achievement in every field or human endeavor in science and art in the industries and in religion and all else that serves to promote the welfare of humanity and pledge ourselves to encourage among us a spirit of fraternity a broad and comprehensive knowledge of phenomena and the forces of the universe so we're going back to the forces of the universe and we go we know that 
when we speak of forces, we're speaking of Ephesians um, 6 and 12, where it tells us, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. So, okay, we don't fight in flesh and blood. We're talking about when they say the forces of the universe, we're talking about in the spiritual realm. Okay, and of course, they could have worded that and made it feel as though it was something else. But those who have eyes and ears are spiritually open. We hear the truth behind the deceit of the enemy. So, um, for those who always say, oh, you're reaching, no, my eyes are open. My ears are open. Thanks be to God, because it's not on my own accord. He graced me enough to open my spiritual eyes and ears, and I pray that you would allow him to do the same for you. And then it says, and in unswerving fidelity to each other, to the cause of achievement, and to the interest of mankind. Members remain standing and sing the Kappa Alpha Psi hymn. Mm. O oh, noble Kappa Alpha Psi, the pride of all our hearts, true manliness, fidelity, thou ever dost impart. The source of our delights and joys and happiness thou art. O oh, noble Kappa Alpha Psi, from thee will never part. O oh, noble Kappa Alpha Psi, from thee will never part. Now in the days of happiness, of pleasure and good cheer, I lift up cup of joy and health to every member here. To those who loved and toiled and strove for thee in other years, I give full honor and revere our noble brothers dear. I give full honor and revere our noble brothers dear. When all our student days are done and we from school must go, still we honor, love, and sing thy praises. Sing thy praises. Sing thy praises. For those who want to say we don't worship our fraternity. We sing our praises. What do you, when, when we were singing to God, we, 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 it's praise and worship. Praise and worship to the Most High God. If you're singing your praises to Kappa Alpha Psi, to Apollo, to Satan, ultimately, then this is your God. This is the God of your life. And there is no in between. It's just, it's, it's quite black and white. There's no sugar coating. It's quite black and white. If you're singing your praises over and over, we live for thee. We strive for thee. We're all thy ways adore. <laughs> we'll long for thee and toil until we reach the golden shore. We'll long for thee and, to and toil until we reach the golden shore. We'll go to Psalm 96. A song of praise to God coming in judgment. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations the Lord reigns. The world also is firmly established. It shall not be moved. He shall judge the peoples righteously. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar. In all its fullness, let the field be joyful, and in all that is in it, then all the trees of wood will rejoice before the Lord, for he is coming, for he is coming to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness, and the people with his truth. So you just sung that poem, hymn of praise to Kappa, and you call yourself a follower of Christ. Who do you serve? Because in these organizations you cannot serve jesus it's impossible you cannot serve both you have no other gods before him you have free will so if you decide to choose to serve apollo by all means by all means it's your world but if you desire to serve the lord your god with your whole heart you must come out of this covenant with satan because I know that many people don't even realize that they have entered into covenant with another God. 
I'm here to tell you that you have. And the Lord is giving you time right now. He's giving you grace right now. He's giving you mercy right now to come out of it. And I mean, I'm just the messenger. So if you feel the need to attack me, by all means, all I'm going to say is be careful. <laughs> because touch not my anointed, do my prophet no harm. Paul March. As Paul March of the chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi, I now declare this assembly duly open for the performance of such business as may properly come before it. That is, that's the close of that ceremony. So the closing ceremony. A member, Brother Paul March. I move. Sir, that after the necessary preliminaries and the proper disposition of the rituals and other properties of this fraternity, the present assembly of this clan of Kappa Alpha Psi be declared adjourned. Brother Paul March, I second that motion. That's another member. Paul March, you have heard the motion. Brothers, are there any remarks? Paul's remarks. Those favoring the motion will manifest it by the usual sign of voting members vote those opposing will do likewise opposing members if any vote the keeper of records will see that any all property is duly placed in the achievements brother paul march thy will shall be obeyed brother paul march <laughs> thy will shall be obeyed matthew 26 and 39 he said jesus this is jesus talking matthew 26 and 39 he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed saying oh my father if it is possible let this cup pass from me this is when he was said to be crucified nevertheless not as i will but as you will it says um brother paul march all is now ready for the adjournment of our clan as Paul March, it says Paul March, as Paul March, I now declare this assembly of the blank chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi adjourned. As a reward for this service, the pledge will be required to wear a small white pearl button on a string about his neck. He must be instructed to keep the button on his person at all times. He will be required to wear this token at the time of his initiation because it is a part of the ceremony. This requirement serves a dual purpose because it makes the individual give some thoughts to those outside of his immediate circle and at the same time brings into closer relationship the pre-initiation period and the actual initiatory ceremony. It is for this reason and pledge ceremony has become a part of the ritual. Pledge ceremony general instructions. And then this is even this. <laughs> Individuals who have conformed to all the prerequisites for and the Bible tells us, do not conform to this world, but be ye transformed by the new renewing of your mind. So it's just like little stuff. It's subtle at first. Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The Lord is exposing every little, every little cover, every little twist of the word of the Lord. Um, all of the prerequisites for pledging the fraternity are advised by the pledge master uh, of the time and place of the meeting, which the chapter, the meeting is informal as the attire and other paraphernalia except the altar piece and Bible. Now, remember earlier in the videos that I were making, they didn't even want to say altar. They kept saying table. It's like the deeper I go into exposing these rituals, the bolder they get. They don't care. They're saying altar now. So for all the people they're like we don't serve another god we didn't have to do this our process we didn't do that every single one of you every last member of any and every d9 organization has had to bow down in front of an altar i don't care if you try to deny that all of you had to bow down in front of an altar that at that very moment even if you didn't say even if you try to mumble over the words that they tried to make you say, if you bowed down in front of that altar, that was you deciding that you are submitting to another God. That was you saying that you are willingly serving another God. Even if you didn't know, Hosea 4 and 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. 
even if you had no idea what you were doing. And then it's like so many people that are like, even when we were in there, it just felt off. But we were just so deep, we just had to do it. Many people were drunk, under the influence. So that's why so many people are in my comments saying, you didn't do that because you don't remember. You were under the influence. You were not of sober mind. You're going to be held accountable for every single word that you have said. Every word you are going to be held accountable. So for the people that are like, we don't remember, you better go read them ritual books over again and bring it back to your remembrance. Because do you want to remember today and repent? Or do you want to remember on Judgment Day when he presents it to you? So what was this that you had to read? Oh, Lord, I, didn't, I didn't forgot I had to say that. Mm. Go backtrack and read it again and repent. Simple. All you have to do is repent. God is a merciful God. He is a merciful God. All you got to do is repent. Turn from your wicked ways. Ask for forgiveness. Humble yourself. Because that's the issue. A lot of people don't want to humble themselves. They don't want to admit to a mistake. They don't want to see that they've done wrong. So they want to continuously defend their sin because they're in love with their sin. Do you love your sin more than you love God? Who owns your heart? Who sits on the throne of your heart? Is it Kappa Alpha Psi or is it Jesus Christ? Because you cannot have both of them sitting there. And so many people love these organizations with all their heart, all of their heart. Like when you sing these hymns, you're giving all of your praise, all of your worship to this great organization. And you don't think that that's a little odd that you have to sing praises to an organization because it's not just an organization. The organization is a cover up for the entity that you are serving. It is another God, a false God, which is Satan. So he has deceived you, which we've all been manipulated in some ways. We just got to admit to it. Lord, I've done wrong. I had no idea what I was doing. Please forgive me. I had no idea. Please forgive me, Lord. I'm sorry. Repent. Turn away from it. Turn back to him. And then it's like some people he has allowed to go into these organizations because they decided that they were just going to fight every sign that he's given them to not join these organizations. So sometimes he just allows you to go through some stuff. And so now you are able to come out of it when you finally decide to submit to him and bring his people out. All things work together for your good. So even if you do have to, not if you do, even when you do repent and come out of that organization, don't look at it as a loss because it wasn't. All things work together. All things work together for your good. So at the end of the day, you're going to have a ministry in that. You're going to be saving other souls with you. You're going to be pulling people with you. But you have to be obedient. You have to submit. You have to obey. Or you can stay right where you are and go on that wide road to destruction. It's your choice, you have free will. He's given it to all of us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <sighs> okay, he says the first contract with the fraternity must be conducted with great dignity. So I'm gonna skip some stuff and I'm gonna just go to all the stuff that um, matters because there's a bunch of stuff that's just irrelevant to um, Lord of the Lord. They do the reciting of the Lord's Prayer again, the raps, and all of that is repeated. And it says, Pledge, uh, Master Paul March, after recognition, I wish to present to the chapter the following men who wish to pledge their allegiance to Kappa Alpha Psi in the hopes that someday they may become members of the Noble Clan. Reads the name of each prospective pledge. As his name is called, each prospective pledge rises and remains standing. Paul March, Brothers of Kappa Alpha Psi. If any member knows of any reason why these men should not be pledged to our fraternity, let him speak now. This is literally like in a wedding. This is a marriage. You are marrying this demon. Um, you're coming into covenant with this entity. So when you're at a wedding, they say, speak now or forever hold your peace. If anybody objects to this wedding, speak now. Blah, blah, blah. This is literally that. Um, then it says pauses. Member to proceed, Brother Paul March. I move that they be permitted another member, Brother Paul March. I second that motion. Paul March, are there any dissenting votes? The motion is considered carried by common consent. Addressing the prospective pledges. 
Gentlemen, as Paul March of Blank Chapter, I take great pleasure in welcoming you into our fold. You are to be congratulated upon the wisdom of your choice. So when they say the wisdom of your choice, know that there are two kinds of wisdom. There is wisdom that comes from God and there is demonic wisdom. That is the knowledge of good and evil. There is wisdom that comes from Satan now. Let's, let's, let's start there. All wisdom is not good wisdom. It says heavenly versus demonic wisdom. James 3 and 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, and without hypocrisy. So all wisdom is not good wisdom. Let's just start there. And so it says, congratulated upon the wisdom of your choice. You have a choice. You've chosen the demonic wisdom. There will be times when you will not comprehend all that you will be called upon to do. But as you grow in knowledge, all things will be made clear. This is once again the, the sense of walking by faith and not by sight. Because when, you, when you're living for the Lord, you God calls you to do some things when you have to lean not on your own understanding. And you just got to do it just because he said it. So they're telling you there's gonna be some stuff that we're gonna call you to do that you don't quite understand, that you don't that you don't quite know why. But when the time is right, thank you, Jesus. All things will be made clear. Don't that sound like the Lord? Come on, come on. You know Satan can't be original, right? So everything that he does is going to be a complete copy of God. And not even a good copy, because he can't dare. He can't even touch God. He can't. During your pledgeship, you will be required to do some unselfish act for which you will receive a trifling token. Keep this token on your person at all times. It will save your life. And when it's saying that it's, it'll save your life, it's because there's a little skit that they're going to put on later on within this initiation that I'll probably go over if I feel that Holy Spirit is leading me to do so. Because this ritual has a lot of stuff that is repetitive that is not necessary for me to go over. Um, so if Holy Spirit leads me to, I will go over that later. Um, so it says, you have come to us of your own volition, of your own free will. And I offer you now your last opportunity to change your mind. Like once again, they give you the option. Just like in the other ones, they're like, are you sure you want to do this? I want you to be completely like, I want you to be completely sure. Are you sure that this is what you want to do? Because once you end, there is no turning back. And they say that in such a way that it's like, yeah, this is what I want to do. I didn't come this far. This is after hell week. This is after all. Like, yes, this is what I want to do. I, like you at this point, you just willing to do whatever. Um, so it's in a kind of smooth way. But and it says, I offer you to now the, the last opportunity to change your mind. Pause it. Do you wish to continue? And it says candidate. Yes, sir, I do. Paul March, kneel at the sacred altar of Kappa Alpha Psi and repeat this oath. I blank, have to say your name, in the presence of the Almighty God and the members of Kappa Alpha Psi here assembled, do hereby solemnly swear, let your yes be your yes and let your no be no. We'll go to scripture for that. But above all, my brethren, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or with any other oath, but let your yes be yes and your no, no, lest you fall into judgment. Now we're going to go to Matthew, Matthew 5, 36 and 37. Nor should you swear by your head because you cannot make one hair white or black. But let your yes be yes and your no, no. For whatever is more than these is from the evil one. This is Bible. This is Jesus. Jesus said that. This portion in the New King James Version is called Jesus Forbids Oath. 
So yeah, so it says, do solemnly swear that I shall abide by all the conditions of my pledge to this grand fraternity. If I willingly violate this oath, I expect to have all connections with this organization completely severed. I swear that I shall keep secret and inviolate all matters pertaining to Kappa Alpha Psi that may be revealed to me. So help me God. Pledge just rise and take your seats. Paul March, let us now make unto our creator the great supplication. All repeats the Lord's Prayer in unison, wraps once, all are seated. Pledge, Pledge Master Brother Paul March, after the recognition, I wish to present to the chapter the following men who wish to pledge their allegiance to Kappa Alpha Psi in the hope that one day they may become members of this noble clan. Reads the name of the prospective pledge, and his name is called. Each prospective member rises and remains standing. So we we'll go back to after they rise. And it says, gentlemen, by your oath, you have taken the first step that binds you to the hearts of the thousands of Kappa men, all of whom have occupied the same position you now enjoy. From this moment on, for the rest of your life, everything you do and the manner in which you do it will reflect upon these men and the organization they represent. Brother Pledge Master, I command these gentlemen to your care for guidance and instruction in the glorious traditions of Kappa Alpha Psi. Brother Keeper of Records, inscribe the names of these pledges on the great scroll of Kappa Alpha Psi and turn over to the Pledge Master in the badges so that these men may be properly identified. Pledge Master, thank you, Brother Paul March. This badge of Kappa Alpha Psi must be worn with dignity and honor at all times. To the sponsors of these pledges, I give the honor of bestowing the coveted prize. The Paul March raps three times. All stand and sing the Kappa Alpha Psi hymn. While the badges are being attached, the members congratulate the pledges. The Paul Mark raps three times for order and stands quietly. All stand quietly. The meeting stands adjourned. Now, that is their, they're now Kappa men. But that's not it. They still have to go through some stuff. Pre-initiatory preparations and general instructions for initiatory ceremony. The candidates from the initiation are to meet at the place remote from a uh, meeting place of the ceremony. At this place, they are met by the pledge master and one member for each initiate who is to serve as a guide who stays with the pledge throughout the ceremony. The pledge is prepared for the initiatory ceremony by applying blindfolds to the eyes and placing a small pad of cotton over the eyelids. Care must be taken not to secure the blindfolds too tightly. All vision must be obliterated. The hands and wrists are securely bound in front of the individual. Because of the effectiveness of the initiatory ceremony depends upon the psychological pressure that can be built up from the initiate, it is absolutely essential that once the blindfold has been applied, no one speaks to or touches the pledge except the guide who speaks only to give directions. The pledge is disoriented and conducted to the place of the meeting. While awaiting the beginning of the initiatory ceremony, the pledges must be seated alone. If there are more than one to initiate, they should be separated sufficiently as to make conversation between them impossible. Absolute quiet shall be maintained in the presence of the pledge. This is solitary confinement and it is mental torture because you're blindfolded, you have no idea where you are, and you are not even allowed to speak to the ones that you walked in there with. Um, the initiatory ceremony is the pledge's first introduction into the real brotherhood of the Kappa Alpha Psi, and the impression made upon him at the time may set the pattern for his entire fraternal career. The story of the initiation has been beautifully told. For its full effectiveness, the enactment must be carried out with great dignity and seriousness. It is the responsibility of each chapter to see to it that all of the necessary preparations have been made in advance and that the participants are thoroughly familiar with the parts that they are to portray. In order to make the ceremony effective, the pledge must be allowed to build up an attitude of apprehension and anticipation. 
This can be done best by withholding from him any clue of what is to come by maintaining an absolute silence from the time the blindfold is applied until the ceremony is in progress. No member shall speak to, touch, or distract the pledge during the ceremony except as it is indicated in this ritual. Under no circumstance shall a chapter omit, change, or abridge any part of the initiatory ceremony. The following properties are essential for an initiatory ceremony. One, sufficient copies of the ritual. Two, the Holy Bible. Three, large coat of arms. Four, large scroll with a motto written in Greek. Um, five, small scroll for each initiate, smaller to the larger scrolls, except the English transition shall be written over the Greek with invisible ink. Supply of invisible ink that will become visible upon the application of heat, charcoal burner, or alcohol lamp, or a can of sternal, or a candle in a suitable container, length of ribbon about 24 inches long, um, a shallow pan of water, sufficiently large enough to be able to step into, small wire that can be heated to, yeah, um, it's just a bucket of sand, small piece of raw meat, a scrap of bone will serve. Test tube containing warm water, photographic flash, apparatus of electric light bulbs arranged so that they may be turned on or off by the priest. This is a Christian organization. Why do you have a priest that's Catholic? What are we doing? Light bulbs of red and blue, uh, cellophane to cover the red lights, graham cracker for each initiate, piece of rope fashioned into a noose, uh, straps of clothes to bind the wrist, and for blindfolds and small pledges of cotton to cover the eyelids under the blindfolds. The wrist are bound in front of the body whenever practicable. The candidates for initiation guides and pledge master should arrange to meet at a place remote from where the initiation is held. The pledge is bound and blindfolded. The pledge master gives the final words of advice and assigns a guide to each candidate. From time to time, there is no word is spoken to the candidate except for the necessary instructions. As the guide stays with the candidate throughout the initiatory ceremony, the candidate should be completely disoriented as the place of the meeting. Um, once there, he should be made to stand or sit alone for some time prior to this just sounds very creepy you're in the dark you're blindfolded around these men you have no idea where you are you don't know these men for real so you can't trust them for real um but yeah guy leads the uh, the candidate to the door of the assembly room where he meets the lieutenant strategist they await the sound of the thunder and lightning from inside of the room um complete silence is maintained until this time okay then we're gonna go back down to now they're in this room it says he awaits rambling for the inside of the door um it says the paul march strategist will do his duty strategist still bearing the door brother paul march a barbarian which um the pledges are called or some barbarians as the cause may be desires to become a member of the noble clan of kappa alpha psi paul march why does he seek admittance unto our sacred realm and we'll go back to ephesians 6 and 12 when we talk about the realms and the heavenly realms and he seeks admittance because he realizes that only here can he fully imbibe the principles that are essential to success and true happiness my god joshua 1 and 8 this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. So if they're saying that only through capital you can have good success, that's basically what they're saying. You can only have, you can only have good success and happiness through capital when God is the center of your joy. And when you have great success by keeping the law of the Lord. Um, Paul March, this being has purpose. Lead him forth that we may determine whether he be fit to become a member of this clan. Strategist now brings the lieutenant strategist, K 
candidate and guides into the assembly rooms to a place in front of the Paul March. Paul March Barbarian, you have indicated by your pledge a desire to become a member of this fraternity. But before you are permitted to enter, are you willing to swear a solemn oath to keep secret forever everything that may transpire or be revealed to you during this initiation? Pledge, I am Paul March. Here we go again. See these? They have to kneel many times, many times bowing down before this altar. Um, Paul March, then kneel at the sacred altar of Kappa Alpha Psi and repeat after me the following oaths. Pledge kneels and repeats, I blank in the presence of Almighty God and the members of Kappa Alpha Psi here dissembled and at the sacred Deltic shrine do solemnly swear that I will keep forever secret all the things that may transpire and be revealed to me during the my initiation. My thing is, why is it so secret if it's of God? Because God is of light. This is just top secret of the world. And if you know anything about it, they ready to fight you type stuff. That's not of God. None of this is of God. They try to mix him in here, but he ain't in here. Um, this is not of him. Paul Marks, show the barbarian to his place. Another alarm is sounded uh, at the gate. And then they have this skit going on where it's saying strategists exalted Paul Mark. I um, desire to announce the return of our noble ambassador who we sent to treat those vile durations concerning the relinquishment of our brother who was ruthlessly ill-treated and carried away into captivity by them. Paul Mark, admit our worthy ambassadors. And the ambassadors come in, um, the vile durations. Yeah, so at this point, it's like a little skit going on that, like I said, all of this is not necessary for me to read. So, um, there's basically these durations, which I have already gone into being these Greek, um, these mythical Greek ancestors. And they're like warlike people. They're real tough and all this stuff. And then it says, um, the Thracians without provocation carried our brother away into captivity, treated him cruelly, and now declare that and as much as he slew three of them with his spear before they were able to overpower him, they will put him to death today and offer him as a sacrifice to Ares, their god. This is one just keeps on uh, mentioning all these different Greek gods. And then it goes into a point of like the fraternity's brothers like, I'll go, I'll die for my brother. Um, let me go, I'll die as a sacrifice for him. Um, and then leading like they're going back and forth saying all of this leading the other pledges to say it too like i'll die for my brother i'll do that i'll do that i'll die for my brother and it's like i'll give up my life for my brother so it's study like going back and forth with this then it says there's thou barbarian to offer thyself as a ransom for this greek member still assist upon him being permitted to go like no he doesn't have to i'll go and then it says paul march understand that the man who takes the place of this greek must endure an atrocious torturous death sound like jesus don't it <laughs> um pledge prompted by the strategist i will offer myself to this to save this greek all marvel at the remarkable spirit of fraternity which the pledge manifest. The spirit of fraternity is what you manifest. That's a demon, baby. Um, Paul Mark, since thou barbarian has such a firm desire to go to the rescue of this Greek, thou mayest go, but it is which profound regret that we send you forth to such a horrible fate. So it's like, oh my God. It's literally the sense of him dying to himself. He's dying to himself for his fraternity brother. But when he comes back from being out of that place with the Thracians and all that stuff, he's now a Kappa man. So he's died to himself and has returned to a Kappa man. So like when we when we get baptized and we go up under that water, we die to ourselves and we come up and now God sees his son. So our life is passed away in Christ Jesus. They died went into being into this captivity, come out as a capital. Okay. Um, and so they take this man, the Thracians have taken him. Um, it says inside this room, there should be displayed prominently clubs, paddles, switches, a burning fire with a branding iron, a rope made into a noose and other instruments of torture. The members acting as Thracians, which are those warlike people, um, should be noisy, 
wrangling and boisterous and sharp contrast to the quiet dignity of the Grecian assembly. Um, after the pledge has been disoriented, the lieutenant strategist pledges and the guys approach the door of the revolt of the Thracians. The loud and raunchous laughter within makes it necessary to rap sharply at the door. A point being admitted, the blindfold is removed from the pledge's eyes so that he sees the display of instruments of torture. Nothing is said or done to direct his attention um, to these instruments. Lieutenant, it's like a mental game, psychological torture. Um, Lieutenant strategist here, vile Thracians, I deliver to you a man, a substitute prisoner for the noble Greek whom thou boldest is unjust captivity. Therefore, deliver the Greek to me as thou engaged thyself to do. Thracian leader, this is no Greek. He might be but a captive slave whose life should not answer for a Greek. And it says, Barbarian, you must go free, and we will kill the Greek unless you are willing to withstand the tortures that he has. And the pledge prompted by the Latrina strategist, I wish to take the place of the Greek. Thracian leader, take your Greek. This one who will sadly rue the day that he was delivered to the Thracian, talking about the pledge. Bind his eyes so he may not look upon the horrors that await him and lead him to the torture. Now, of course, the Thracians are the ones that are fraternity members. They're just pretending. It's just, it's just a play. It says the Thracians making sure the instruments of torture have been seen. No comment should be made. A psychological test, literally. Make it start going into like you know the instruments that they needed to have the uh, utensils or whatever, the hot water, the test tubes, and all that stuff. And then it says, it is absolutely essential that the pledge be alone in a quiet, unfamiliar environment, remote from the preparations. In this condition, the pledge is led to the door of the torture chamber where he can hear what is going on within. In another room, members have completed the preparations of the third test. Torches de Lash. This is a purely psychological test. After a suitable interval of absolute silence, a designated member strikes the floor, table, or cushion a heavy blow with a strap. At the same time, another member cries out as if in pain. If there are more than um, one pledges, this device may be repeated a number of times. And then it says, the pledge is rushed into the room and made to bend over. Um, a designated member stands in readiness with a ribbon wet in ice water, sufficiently dry that it does not drip, um, held over the bowed back of the pledge. So it's like he's holding this over the pledge's back as they're whipping something across the room. He's blindfolded. It says, if the suspense has been carefully built up and absolute quiet maintained, the pledge is likely to yell in pain. So it's like, it's as if he like hearing that without seeing anything and feeling the coldness of like you know the whip he's psychologically feeling that he's like it's such a psychological torture um the reaction of the pledge is the test and da, 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 da. okay and then what's the next test the pledge is immediately led to another part of the room to take the second test the second test is called the burning sands then it says a small quantity of sand is divided into two parts and placed into a shallow pan or box of spread on a paper the first portion is moistened slightly and kept at room temperature the second portion is heated but is insufficiently hot um, to cause injury to feet of course they're saying this but we don't know how hot it really was a pan of ice water preferably containing cracked ice is prepared um, these three items are placed on the floor one stride apart. The pledge is instructed to take three fatal steps. He first steps onto sand at room temperature. The second stride is on the hot sand. And the third is on the pan of water with the ice chips in it. The pledge is then permitted to dress and return to the temple of the Thracian. So he's crossed the burning sands. There is um, a woman, her name is a great woman of God named Dorothy Denise, who broke down the meaning of the burning sands. Because whenever you see of these fraternities and sororities, you're always seeing that we cross the burning sands or whatever. And then there's also the sense of like, when Moses and them came, when Moses, Jesus, and the children of Israel came from Egypt, and they were entering into the promised land. Why is it that when you're crossed over from being an individual, 
unto these Greek organizations. They're called Welcome to Greek Them. They always say, Welcome to Greek Them, Welcome to Greek Them, you've crossed the burning sands. When Mo and she broke this down and she said, When Moses split the Red Sea, they were in Egypt. It's hot in Egypt. Up underneath that water is sand. So they had to cross through the Red Sea on sand that is hot from Egypt. So that is literally what the burning sands mean. It, it represents Moses splitting that Red Sea and the children of Israel crossing over. My God. So he's just crossed the burning sands apparently. Um, and it says the way, and it's psychological because imagine this, you on a warm piece of sand or you're on a piece of some sand that's like room temperature and then the sand get hot they probably burnt that sand to the point where it's on fire while they're walking on it and then you step into a cold like that that's painful the pledge is then permitted to dress yes and then it says the altar is prepared again another altar it says return to the temple of the thracian priest again with the priest the altar is prepared and a candle furnishes the only illumination the pledge is stretched out prone on the floor. So you now, like this, bowed out. That's worship. That looks straight like worship to me. The pledge is stretched out prone on the floor with his head directed towards the altar. You're literally, okay. The blindfold is removed. Now it's like, all right, now you see what you're doing. It says the priest entered. Priest, good worshipers. Good worshipers. Good worshipers. Is the sacrifice in place? Good worshipers. He's calling you worshipers. I mean, so what are you worshiping? You're laid out in front of this altar of Kappa Alpha Psi. And he come in talking about good worshipers. You're, you're worshiping another God. Like I said, this stuff is like all mixed up. So the brand is actually the test that happened before the burning sands. But it's like whatever. It's still the same thing. The brand. It says, in this test, a designated member heats a twist of wire incandescence over the fire. The same fire may be used for the business of the oracle. In the presence of the pledge, he experiments with the um, branding iron on a piece of raw meat that the pledge may get the odor of burning flesh. It's so psychological. And, and they're saying this, but I know good and well that they probably branded this man as well, especially because these rituals are pretty old and I know that they change over time. However, the principle is, remains the same. Um, then it says another designated member has a, t a test tube containing a little hot water in the end. At the given signal, the pledge is grasped and held firmly with his back to the brander. And as the wire is placed upon the raw meat, the other member places the rounds end of the test tube of hot water mandatorily on the pledge's back between the shoulder blades. Um, great care should be taken to see that the test tube is not hot enough to burn the skin. The effect of the illusion may be heightened in the spot where the test tube touches and covers with a small piece of adhesive. That's crazy. They're, they're basically dripping this hot water seemingly on this man's back um, so that it seems like he's getting branded. <sighs> Lord. And then it says, then with these holy hands, you're laying hands on this man now. Apply I the flame of the gods. Acts 8, 14 through 17. Now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then it says for chapter, uh, verse 17. Then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Here in this ritual, he is saying with these holy hands, I apply the flame of the gods. That's pretty self-explanatory because what are the gods? Who are the gods? The priest flashes, the lights, yeah. And I did some more stuff going on. And it says, as they're flashing the lights, like, um, great and wise Aries, today children, offer upon thee this sacrifice. And then they have these lights as if, like, with the red light, it's good because the capitals are red. And then the other light is, like, bad or whatever, whatever. Um, now flaring forth another red flame, the priests and now the um, Thracians are terrified because they're like, oh, the gods are scared. Like, the gods are upset with us. 
Um, and then it says, interpret the failure of the gods to send another red flame as the indication of their disapproval of the sacrifice which the Thracians offer. Yeah, so basically there's a whole bunch of like back and forth stuff going on in this place. So basically now they're at this point of like going back and forth with this man. They're ready to kill him, quote unquote. And then like um, they see the where earlier on they were saying if you keep this around you or uh, if you keep this around you, it will save your life. So as the Thracians are trying to kill this man, there is somebody that's like, cold man, we cannot hang this man. He wears the badge from serving humankind, outlaw. It is some kind of trick, you know, take it off of him, kill him, whatever, whatever. Um, and then it says, all see ye the dolphin from the described chief outlaw. This is a spear of great Delphic God, Apollo which he winds in defense of those who worship his shrine. Oh, mighty Apollo, forgive us our rash intent. It's craziness. Um, so the fact that they even were gonna put a noose around this man's neck. This was in 1911. Given the history of noose around this black man's neck, come on. Um, it's a lot more, it's some more stuff, but as far as um, what I need to read, I don't really need to go over everything now. There is a woman named, like I said, Lady Denora, Dorothy Denise. She went over it all. I don't feel it necessary to go over everything. I just felt it necessary to go over what the Lord has called me to go over. And then it goes again, where they have to bow down in front of another altar. Um, now this time they have to bow down in front of this altar and put their, their hand on the Holy Bible. Um... It's just like a lot of mind game stuff that they put them through and it, it's crazy because like the almighty Apollo showed up, right? The god of this organization and has freed this captive barbarian and now he's able, because I didn't even go over the fact that they gave him this Greek scroll and was like, can you, under, can you read this? And he's like, I can't read it. So after he went through all of that and they're like, so basically this was something that he had to go through in order to understand that Greek scroll. And it was with the invisible ink. So they gave him this Greek scroll, which he obviously couldn't read. And he was like, okay, well, we're going to take you somewhere where you can get the knowledge. He has to go through this psychological torture. And when he comes back from being psychologically tortured, he's able to read this scroll, which is in English. It's the invisible ink. And so now he's a Kappa man. This is what a Kappa man is. You've got the knowledge. So you a Kappa man. And then it says, um, Brother Paul Marsh, thy will has been obeyed. I will. Um, and it says, addressing new member, my dear brother, as Paul Marsh of the chapter of Cap Alpha Psi, it is now my duty of the blank chapter of Cap Alpha Psi, it is now my duty to make you familiar with the emblem, signs, and real ritualistic work. So they're going over the signs and all this stuff and their motto. And then it says, here's the motto of Kappa Alpha Psi, achievement through fraternity, knowledge, and fidelity, the initiatory ceremony, which you have just experienced. Finally, after you have obtained knowledge and stated um, for the assembly of the Greeks, you encountered outlaw who, after vanity, trying to dissuade you from the pre uh, purpose you had set before you and to induce you to forsake in the hour of true um, need uh, truly friend yeah, yeah. so this is the part where it's saying it's Apollo basically has saved you but on your road from Delphi the great Delphian god Apollo came to your relief with his great spear slew the wretched outlaws to put them in the ignominious road in your future contest with the evil forces of which I have just spoken to you with aided and delivered by the forces of righteousness and the great god of all the earth if you only manifest an unswerving fidelity to the clan of Kappa Alpha Phi, its principles and teachings ever, and then it says, if thou art really noble, wise, and true, immortal gods will guide thee safely through. That's the oracle. Hello, Jesus. Immortal gods will guide you. Immortal gods. So it goes over like their hand symbols and all of that stuff. And then um, for the very end, for the funeral, um, the initiatory ceremony, for the burial, they're just quoting Bible scriptures and stuff. So, yeah.
that was pretty deep and demonic. And I just, my God, that was, that was, that was dark. So, um, that's all I really have because I don't, so I, I don't have anything else to say. It's all pretty self-explanatory. It's demonic. Even it's, and, and I, I must touch on the fact that I have not gone over the hazing in which many of these fraternity members, sorority members have had to go through. But I do, when I post these videos, I link testimony videos of people who have come out of these organizations and I pray that you go watch them. Because you don't think I'm just making this up because I got all this time on my hands, because please. But I will do whatever it is that the Lord calls me to do. Um, I pray that you view this video with an open heart. I pray that the Lord will grace you. I pray for peace over your mind when you do decide to come out of these organizations um thank you for watching this is part nine i have one more to go yay okay see you on the next video